Hello, welcome to ASNU. Today I'm going to be talking about gasoline injectors and the really important parameter called dead time, also known as offset and latency. If we look at our simple diagram again, when the ECU closes its electronic switch, the injector squirts fuel. In reality, there is a delay between the switch closing and the injector squirting fuel. This is caused by the time it takes for the solenoid inside the injector to build up energy and the time it takes for the plunger to lift against the spring pressure and the fuel pressure. There is also a small delay for the injector to close. When combined, these delays are known as dead time. OK, let's have a look at a perfect injector that doesn't have any delays. On the top graph, we're going to display the injector pulses. And on the bottom graph, we're going to display the flow increasing as the pulse width and duty cycle increase. So this test is for a perfect injector running at three bar and 13.8 volts on the battery. So let's start increasing the pulse width and duty cycle. So here we have in the top graph, we've got the pulse width every 20 milliseconds. And we can see the flow has started to increase immediately from zero. As we increase the pulse width and duty cycle, we can see the flow from the injector increase and we can continue all the way to 100% or the static flow condition and in this case our injector is delivering a maximum of 600 cc's per minute now if we increase the rail pressure to four bar we'll see that the maximum flow from the injector increases Let's put that back to three bar. Now let's compare our perfect injector with a real injector. Let's set the pulse width back to zero. And we'll now show as we increase the pulse width, perfect injector starts flowing immediately as the pulse width increases. But there's a delay of around about 1.3 milliseconds before a real injector starts to deliver fuel. And that's caused by the dead time. So if we continue to increase the pulse width, we can see the real injector follows the slope of a perfect injector, but it's just offset by the dead time. So we can go all the way up to 100% again, and eventually, the real injector falls back in line with a perfect injector. So when tuning an engine ECU, it really needs to know two things. It needs to know the maximum flow of the injector, but also the dead time, so it can compensate for it to achieve the correct flow. Now, as well as increasing the maximum flow of an injector when we increase the fuel pressure, you'll see we've also increased the dead time. So dead time is proportional to fuel pressure. And similarly, battery voltage. If we reduce the battery voltage, we'll also see the dead time increase. And that's because it takes longer for the solenoid coil to energize. OK, so let's have a look at two injectors which both flow 600 cc at 100% duty or static flow. Now, these could be um, from different manufacturers or they could be exactly the same injector type and part number. But injector A may have a weaker swing spring because it's worn. As you can see, the flows are quite similar throughout the uh, duty cycle range. Um, and you may think, 
well, this has a one millisecond dead time, and this has a two millisecond dead time. It's not really that significant. But let's have a look at the flow at three milliseconds pulse width and 15% duty. Injector B is flowing 30.5 cc's per minute, and injector A is flowing 64.5 cc's per minute. That's over double the flow from injector A. So I think this demonstrates that static flow is important and it's the maximum flow you can achieve from the, the injector. But also dead time is really important because you don't tend to use the injector at maximum flow. You tend to use an injector at 80, 85% duty and below. So how do you know what data to use? Well, if you're purchasing as new performance injectors, a comprehensive set of data is provided giving you uh, static flows at various pressures, the dead time at various pressures and battery voltages. If the injector supplier can't give you this data, you can create it yourself using as new test equipment. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.